I come to like to say that I'm joined by the chairman of Hartlepool United. Thank you so much for joining us. I suppose the question is first, you know, how come now to do this video, do this almost fun Q&A? Yeah, I just thought it would be a, it's a good time to get informed the fans where we are as a club and what, you know, all the uncertainty around the club that's been surrounded for the last eight, nine months. Uh, I just thought it would be a good time just to put people in the picture, really. Fans have brought the questions in. You really emphasise the importance that you wanted these questions to come from the fans. As you know, you, you believe the fans are such a big part of the club. Oh, of course, of course they are. I mean, the fans are everything to the club. And I think it's, you know, like I said to you, that I've got nothing to hide. I think we're in an open book. So, yeah, that's why I asked. Well, you know, people can put their questions to me and I'll answer them honestly. I suppose we'll get straight into it. I suppose one of the biggest questions, um, and if you're looking at the current time as we played last night, Michael Bratt asks, and it was a question I was going to ask, he asked, do you see us challenging this season? And I suppose I just want to kind of get your reaction of how we've started so well, unbeaten in the league, mm -hmm. third at the moment. Well, it's one of those things, I think, somebody was telling me, said, you know, it's been a best start for a couple of decades. Uh, so that's really encouraging, but we all know you don't get too excited this early on in the stage, but it gives you something to build on. And as we've all seen in, in the past, once you get a few results, it starts snowballing. All the confidence in the, in the players is there. They start you know, getting points to some of the draws that you have. You start turning them into wins, etc. So, yeah, the answer to the question is yeah, we definitely should be up there, there or thereabout. Just adding on to that, you know, how assured and confident were you with Dave Chalnar and the squad you've given him at the start of the season to go out there and you know, do the job that they're required to do? Well, I think I've, I've said it before and, uh, and I'll say it again. I think as soon as we appointed Dave, it was like a breath of fresh air from what we've had at the club. Um, even previously when I was involved with Darlington, etc. It was a breath of fresh air, his ideas, his, his, his mentality, his business sense, business acumen, if you like, at this level, how, how you know the budget should be worked and how money should be handled, etc. And I've always said it, and I'll say it again, that look, Yes, money helps, but it needs to be spent wisely. You've seen right at the top of the pyramid, Manchester United buying players 80 million, 90 million, and yeah, where is that getting them for the last seven, eight years? So it's all about getting, having the money, it does help, but they spend it wisely. Uh, so when Dave's come in, he's done that, and, and I think that, the, you know, I think, you know, if you, you were to mark them, I'd say it's 10 out of 10 for the recruitment, value for money. He's built this. Uh, backroom staff from scratch more or less and um, that's always even before the season started gave me a lot of confidence look that back backbone of the of the club is basically in, on a solid footing now and that goes from there and yeah so far it, it's proven to be the case certainly been a good start to the season mm. we'll carry on with these questions coming in from Wayne Julian on Twitter uh, he says I'm just wondering if you're happy with what's been achieved since you've been at the club and had your original three-year plan, because not another one of the questions is, you know, three years ago you said you aimed to be in the club for around about three years. Is that plan still achievable? Well, the, I don't know whether the plan's achievable, but I think there's a lot of uh, water under the bridge since then. Um, the re, just to give you an example, um, and I think it's, uh, it's public knowledge when the accounts come out, when we first went in the first year, the losses were one and a half million pounds. Second year, they were down to 800k. I'm led to believe this year it's going to be something like four or five hundred thousand. Which, so we've been, and albeit that's some of the furlough payments that is obviously been in there, that's helped. So it still is year on year we've improved. So if you want to look at it, uh, achieving that side of it, I think we've done really well. The football inside, I think it's every, every fan would agree with me, would have been like to been a bit, little bit further on than where we are but for whatever reasons that uh, we haven't really achieved that but hopefully hopefully fingers crossed this year is the year so in that respect that three-year plan if we get promoted this year is is work to a t you know work, work to a t and um, and that's where we are you know just talking about as you said that three-year plan there's plenty of questions from that um, another one on twitter came in that's when you bought the club he said he'd only be around really for two or three years, and this is the third year as we currently stand. If not, what are your plans for investment going forward? Obviously, such different times mm -hmm. in the current day. Yeah. But obviously, you know, fans, all they want to see is players being brought in. Players brought in and, and the club being successful. 
And, I, and, the, and the honest answer to that, that question, I've been asked that so many times over the years, it, that you do not know, because it's so much uncertainty, and especially with the COVID now, um, it, it's just so much uncertainty. I mean, and originally, I think uh, I've said it before, that, that you know the plan was, well, look, I'll put a million pound in, and other people will come in and they'll put money in, and we'll move on to this takeover bid, etc. In in a, in a minute. But unfortunately, there's been nobody that's that's you know been willing to put their put their hand, hands in their pockets, um, and so we you know there, there's ongoing talks with the council regarding the new stadium, and that I don't want to talk too much about it because the fans have heard it all that before, but. These are the things that are going to make determine whether you're in there for for another year or whether you're in there for another five years or another ten years. Once all these things in the background, if they fall into place, that's what you know. So that's the honest answer. So really, if you're going to ask me if I'm going to be involved another year and then what I'm going to do or whether I'm going to be involved another ten years, the honest answer is it's a lot of other stuff that that needs to fall into place to keep you involved. So many fans really care about the club and you know really want to know, as you said, the finances behind the club. Yeah. And another question that's come in on Twitter is saying, it has been a complicated year, but is there a vision beyond the season? As you said, hopefully, you know, this might be the season, but what is the vision beyond that? And how do we know as fans and how do we help to ensure the club is sustainable? Well, there's, there's, uh, there's sort of two separate answers to that. One answer is, honestly, you can't have a plan after this season. If that's the honest answer, because we don't know where we're going to be with COVID, we've just this these uh, furlough payments been God sent. That's uh, and I said this on six and seven months ago on the radio, and people, some of the fans took it the wrong way. That you know I'm looking to pull the plug, etc., etc. It wasn't. It was just a case of look. There's a lot of uncertainty on its on its way. Um, so that's that's helped. Uh, we've just received these, or we're just going to receive these payments from uh, from the lottery funding which again is going to keep the club afloat uh, and going forward like I said if we can sustain the losses and that's why we've got uh, uh, the fans involved already we've been you know Martin's been speaking to them for three four months now and we are trying to look at ways where we'll look if you know if there ever comes a day where it becomes too much for me or too much of a burden for me financially where do we go? So I'm like to think we've already got that ball rolling. Um, so the honest answer is yes. I, I'm still want to achieve what I set out to achieve, and that's getting getting the club back into the into the into the league. But unfortunately, there's a lot of uncertainty now. You know, in 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 sort of we've got these payments till the end of the year. Where do we go if we can't have the fans for the rest of the season? Uh, and I want just to add to, to one of those points as well. Um, Alex, is that you know? I just want to personally thank you all, all the fans who have actually bought a season ticket. All the you know, I'm going on about uncertainty. It was all uncertainty for those fans as well. But there's been actually thirteen, fourteen hundred people who put their hands in their pocket and put that money into the club. And I've, I'm sick and tired of hearing people. It's my club. It's my club. But it's those people I want to thank because they've actually they didn't know whether they were going to go into the matches or not. They've actually put money hands in their pocket and put money into the club. They, that's those are the sort of gestures that keep you going. Those are the sort of gestures that, that I think. Hang on, I'm here. I'm not here by myself. There's people behind me who want the best for this club. So these are the things that I think mean a lot when when you're going forward and making decisions. Where you know that you're not just one person putting his hand in his pocket every week in week after in after, um, month in month after month after month. I suppose we'll just quickly go off topic for a second. As you mentioned the fans yeah. and how important they are, I think it's important that we mention over the last few days of all the fans that brought food into the stadium, into the Victoria Lounge yeah. uh, for people to come and collect. And it really shows, um, you know, something that was done over a day, how important the fans are, not just to the club, but to this community. Yeah. I mean, the community itself, you know, look, it's, it's no, no secret. The art level is in an affluent town. But I think within that, what you get is togetherness. What you get is togetherness from people who want to help each other because you know they know how, how when times are hard, everybody needs to dig in. So gestures like that is absolutely fantastic, you know. And, and like I said, and and they want the club. They, some of them generally want to, you know, hurts them when when the club's not being well run right. 
and yeah, I like to think you know we, we, we're doing our bit, them behind us, then hopefully together we'll get where we, where we all want to get to. Going back onto the questions, obviously you were um, talking about you know how long you don't know how long you will be at the club, uh, and one question that kind of was really the talk of the town mm -hmm. for such a long period of time uh, comes in from Durham Chris who asks. I think the main question will be, can you clarify really the information of the apparent takeover talk? Yeah, certainly. Um, first I heard of, 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 of the so-called takeover was from Ian Scobie. Ian Scobie had a phone call from one of the one of the guys in the game, who knows, one of the agents who put, who's put some deals together. Uh, so I said, all right, okay, there's no harm in talking to them. We've been talking to different people for the last two and a half, three years because I want people to invest in the club, people so it you know, sort of uh, lightens the load on me. And, set, and then Ian spoke with them, and then they went off uh, and spoke to Jeff a couple of times. Um, now, straight away, that got my back up a little bit because I'm thinking, hang on, nobody's bothered talking to me, and I'm the, I'm the guy who sat here who's, who's wrote checks for you know, 2.3 to 1.4 million quid. Uh, then eventually, the, one of this agents got talking to me. To this very day, the honest truth is, I don't know who these two super rich American investors were. It was always, well, you, you'll be amazed when you find find out their names, etc., etc. So I actually, the first question I asked is, well, look, would they be looking to invest into the club? I don't mind being the main share, you know, to be the main shareholder. If they're going to put in the sort of money that you think they're going to put in, um, I, I haven't got a you know, chip on my shoulder if you like. If, as long as it's going to benefit the club and we're going to get somewhere together, I'll be, no. The, the answer was categorically no, they're, they're interested in taking over lock, stock, and barrel. Um, okay, so what's the deal if, if they want to take over lock and stock and barrel? So, up till this day, I haven't seen any proof of funding. I haven't seen, I don't know who these two guys were. All I know, I've got an email to basically say, look, step aside, write off whatever you put in and we'll take over now and that's it. Now I even said to the guy, I said, well look, if that's the case, I may as well give, give, the, give the club to the fans and let them run it. Well, they won't be able to run it because they can't afford the losses. I said, well, you know, there's other clubs going part-time, etc. I'd rather do that and then undo everything that I've done for the two and a half years. And let's not forget, this is not just the money. This has been a lot of hard work, a lot of time and effort put into this, you know, behind the scenes that, that you can't really put value, to, value onto. So these guys, like I said, they, they come along. And then what really got my back was, up was that the day the email came and the story was leaked. Now I'm hearing stories from, from some of the fans who've been speaking to me that, you know, Russ Green's been on the phone, they've been doing this, doing that. So it's basically, the way I see it, it, it was a case of, you know, unsettling the fans against me and try to get me out, which, you know, I've got my own thoughts on that, but I'll keep them to myself. Um, but yeah, that story was leaked. I know exactly from from who and who by. You know, these guys are supposed to be so-called American um, big hitters. You'll think they knew, knew a, uh, a journalist who's just been laid off by Northern Echo. You think that, you know, they, they would have that? So I know exactly what that, but I, like I said, I keep those thoughts to myself. And, and that was it. And there was, that was the, the main, you know, when, you, when somebody's want, want to do a deal, first and foremost, you go and speak to the owner of that business. You don't go and speak to their solicitors. And you certainly don't speak to somebody who's just put 100,000 100, into, into the business. And, and, and then you speak to the guy. And I still, to this day, I still do not know. I actually, when the Wrexham story broke, about uh, Ryan Reynolds, etc. I actually text the guy and I said, well, were these the two investors that you were talking about? Never replied. So, and uh, anybody who's got half a business brain would work out businesses and things like that. I've done a lot of, lot of deals, a lot of bigger deals than Hartlepool Football Club, and I know how to do deals, and this is certainly isn't the, one to, the way to do it. So that, that's, the, that's the, you know, every word of that statement is true. I think fans probably did recognise, especially a few of them, that even if you were to sell the club, your best interest is always 
Hartlepool United because you care so much about the yeah. club so you're not just going to give it to a nobody who you don't really know anything about exactly exactly and that that's like I said if somebody's got money to put in and they want to I mean this is exactly what I said to the fans groups as well I have not got a chip on my shoulder I want 100% control and I want total control but unfortunately you know it's money that makes the world go round it's as simple as that and so anybody wants to invest we've been speaking to people I would have no hesitancy at all to speak, sit down and speak to the guys but unfortunately it was just all ifs and buts it was all you know this dream ticket and if I would ask the fans how many times have they heard that up and down the country Wigan is prime example there you know very Wigan you can go on so would they have thanked me then and I've, heard, I've seen a few of the idiots on, 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 on social media and stuff like that. Well, yeah, he's, he hasn't got money left and he's, he needs to do this and he needs to do that. You know, they always know best how to run everything, you know, and they haven't done a decent day's work in their life. So, but the genuine fans, are, you know, the ones I've spoken with, they understand where, exactly where I was coming from. And uh, it, wasn't, it was not a best decision for the club. Certainly not on the, with the information we had. That's a fact. I suppose that now you will just be looking at today and going ahead especially in the you know the current climate that we're in and now that's something of the past um so you know talking back to the football i suppose yeah, yeah, yeah. which obviously is so important at the moment um go back to the questions uh jack ashman asked will yourself slash the club be looking to tie dave chandler down for a longer time uh and as he asked about how you feel about the start of the season which you've mentioned but i suppose and you spoke about dave chandler but is that something that is in your future plans to tie Dave Challoner down? Dave, Dave's uh, contract is till the end of next season. It was two and a half years when he first came on board. So that's so I think that's at the moment is working well and it's working um, going according to plan, I think everything. But if it's a conversation that we need to have sort of, you know, in the new year, I'll sit down with Dave and speak to him and see what his thoughts are and see what my, where I am with everything. Because at the end of the day, he's only going to be comfortable as what I've got to say and you know and likewise I've got to be comfortable with, with him so I don't think that's a conversation that needs to be had at the moment um because we, we you know we've got till the end of next season um the contract but maybe in the new year and maybe there's a conversation to be had there we'll go move on to Instagram now with some of the questions uh and one of the questions that came in is you know we we know how much you are interested in watching the football and being there every yeah. single match and how much that does interest you. But they ask, how far do you think this club can go? Obviously, there's so much you know unsure of what where we're going to be. But you know, how far do you believe Hartlepool United can go under? I suppose your investment. Well, my my you know I, I just love stories like, um, you know, like Brentford nearly got in the Premier League this year. I love stories like, you know, Wickham just got in the championship for the first time. Bert and Albion from non-league got into the championship. So I think the honest answer is there isn't a limit depending on, you know, if things are working right on and off the pitch and you're getting some sort of investment in there. But realistically, I think, I think realistically, uh, you, you, you've got to say at the very least, League One, it's, it's, it's you know, scared up to be a League One one club and that's where I think now others like the council and everybody else that you know they're trying to attract some of this town funding um, from the government and, and, and have a because end of the day you, you're not going to keep going you're not going to keep got my phone going. you're not going to keep going with uh, um, with making losses that we are at the moment so you need to bring in other revenue streams i.e. functions i.e. you know the concerts, that type of thing. Um, but, um, and that's where the council have got to play a big part. They've got to help us now with, because the first question you're going to ask from any, any investor is, do you own your own stadium? What, what's the stadium like? So I think that's a big part to, part to play, uh, uh, to bring other, other investment, other, well, other revenue if you like. So you're not having to take a hit um, because the losses are going to be bigger. It, it, if you're if you're ambitious, you know if you're going to League One, either you just have the same squad and struggle, which no fans wants to see, and I'm one of those where you look if you get up, you want to try to get up again, but then the investment becomes heavier, and then whatever you, league money that you go, that goes back into the pot, and um, so but you need money coming in from elsewhere, and that's where I'm hoping 
that you know the, the the work that we've done with the council and the ongoing work that we've got going on with the council will help to bring money into the club from other revenues. I suppose you, you know the the real base of it is whatever the club does, whether it goes forward or backwards, depends what happens on the pitch. Yes, and a lot of fans have been asking or interested in. You know what is your opinions of our current squad? Obviously, you said they're doing so well, and would you be looking to invest more in the squad in the next transfer window? I think, like I said earlier, that I think uh, I think uh, Ma, uh, sorry, Dave and uh, Ian have done a really good job with the, with the budget we've had and getting value for money, and I keep you know using that word, word value for money. Um, but I'm one of those where. Yes, the budget's spent up. We haven't got any money at the moment. But if we, you know, it looks like that's somewhere along the line. Dave needs help and he needs my support and my backing, uh, and we've got a, you know, some money somewhere else. Uh, yes, we would then help him because at the end of the day, you know, it is critical that we give him all the support that he needs to to give us a team that we all can be proud of and be up there challenging. How happy and proud of you were the fans when they all came together for that budget booster, which you fantastically, you know, matched in a way. And how much did that help the club get through these uncertain times? I think it just—I mean, I looked—I looked at that at the time, um, you know, when the donations were coming in, and and I looked at it and I thought, fifty pound here, hundred pound here, you know, ten pound, twenty pound, and that these, you know, the, those are the things that that you you look at and you're thinking. Oh, great gesture that that's brilliant that and those then those are the sort of um, gestures as I said earlier that that lift you that you want to think well no yeah I can carry on this because there are people that actually genuinely believe what we're trying to achieve and what we're trying to do opposed to you know being being knocked every step of the way and um, so things like that yeah absolutely fantastic I think and uh, yeah they, they give you a massive lift when we talk about the budget and obviously um, and this and this current last few months, a lot of fans were asking, you know, was was the reason for the sales of like, when we look at Luke James and Gus McFood and the Boreham Wood, was that all down to budget and trying to be smart with the money that we had? Exactly, and I think you know, the, Dave's made some fantastic decisions, some fantastic uh, uh, in, incoming players, uh, and I think I, I don't know about. All the, all the fans but I generally feel you know knowing the the financial situation knowing the financial um, um, sort of implications that we've probably got the best squad that we've had I would go as far as you know value for money the last 10 years 15 years um, because you know I've seen the figures when they were in League One and League Two and they just they just didn't stack up they were horrendous so in that respect I think uh, we're more than happy yes and just kind of finally, um, obviously fans are excited, you know, we, we, we were top of the league a few weeks ago, uh, and one fan, one fans, or a few fans have asked, you know, are you ready to hire that open top bus yet for the end of the season? <laughs> it, it's one of those, isn't it? Like I said, it, it's, it's a sight for sore eyes, and I'm not going to lie, there's a few times when it was on Sky... Uh, Sky Sports on, on next morning and I paused it just for a, for a second <laughs> just for a second and I just have a look and I'm not going to lie that's the, that's the football side football fan in you like but you know we've got to be realistic it's early days but I would say yeah enjoy it while, while it's there as well because you know every year we're going on about if we'd only won this we would have gone top of the league if we'd only you know done this and we, Dave and his team are actually doing it so yeah long may it continue well thank you very much um, I'd just like to ask you know would you be happy probably to join us and let's, let's say towards the end of the season hopefully yeah, definitely, we'll, definitely. we'll be having a conversation about where we're going to be starting our like yeah. in League 2 yeah. um, but thank you very much for joining us uh, that was the chat with the chairman thank you everyone for bringing in the questions thank you very much thank you. no problem <laughs>